Hi, welcome back to David Bowles' podcast, Human Meme. And in this podcast, we endeavor to understand what it means to be human, how to live a human life, how to get along with each other, and what we're going to do when we get into trouble. It's so easy to repress and to degrade and to pull people down. It's harder to build things from nothing. It's harder to lift people up when you're tired. And it's tiring to try to move forward when you don't think you can only take another step except backward. The topic today is mechanization of the self and the loss of wonder. And this, in many ways, is a brief history of the United States. So kind of bear with me as we go through three angles of understanding. Uh, Transportation, communication, and social living. So we start with wondering what is lost and won in the merits of what we now call a modern life. Now in 50 years, will it still be a modern life? Probably. And what we're talking about now will be antiquity and loss. Uh, We started in gears and steel and wood, and we are now in the technological age, which is transistors and CPUs and virtuality. And I'm not sure that the advancement has done us good as a society. It's been wonderful for advancing thought, science, and knowledge, but for social communication for the human meme on a personal blood level, I think we're worse for the wear. So we begin with the idea of the Wild West. Now, the history of America is people moving from east, right, where the pilgrims landed, east to west. The Wild West, the expansive west, the land of opportunity is the west. And what's so interesting about moving east to west is you're moving against Mother Nature. Because Mother Nature in the, Amer- in the United States moves west to east. You can always predict the weather by looking at a map and saying, aha, whatever is sweeping in from the west is going to hit the east. So to go as a pioneer and pack up your family and get a Conestoga wagon and move east to west into an unknown, dangerous territory filled with threats to your life is more than just pioneer spirit. It is hubris. It is seeking danger. And when you seek danger, you are likely going to find it waiting for you. And uh, danger is not always happy to see you. Danger is very happy to get rid of you, be it... uh, Native Americans defending their land, be it the dust storms, be it the Wild West itself, uninhabitable. But people decided they wanted land, and they wanted a larger family, and they wanted more room, and they wanted to get away from the compression that was the east coast of the United States of America. So ponies, horses, were big. That's how you got around. You had hands-on, you had to take care of them every single night or they would fail you. And their life expectancy was uh, not that of a tractor. They had very delicate lives. And if you wanted to survive, you had to make sure your animals survived because they were the keys to moving you forward. So you loaded up your Conestoga wagon, you went west, you had hopes and dreams of riches and a larger family. And uh, sometimes you found it, and sometimes you didn't find it. But when you did find it, you tended to stop where you were, put down some roots, and, as history would expand, wait for the trains to get to you. Trains were an important part of the infrastructure of building in the United States. They were static, but they were very specific. They were reliable. You knew you could catch a train here and get off there. Uh, The rail is really what helped win the Wild West. And today, jumping forward in large uh, leaps, we have cars, and we still get around. But lately, in the last five years, the whole notion of what it means to get around and to be nomadic and move and 
go westward in our minds, if we're not already there in our bodies, is the idea of the Uber society, where you don't have to have a car to get along. You can have someone pick you up and drive you where you want to go instantly and uh, for profit. So it's not like a train. It's not like a bus. It's more like the limousine life of the privileged and the wealthy, where you have a limousine and you have a driver, and that driver takes you where you want to go. Now, the Uber drivers don't want to think of themselves as limousine drivers. They want to think of themselves as business people and independent contractors. But what they don't realize is the next step in their modern morality is the removal of them in their job position. Because we are very quickly moving to autonomous cars and driverless cars. And that's terrific for safety and for convenience. But in a way, it's bad for people because we become isolated in pods that we will call cars. But are they really? Communication. Again, we have the Pony Express throughout history. Not very long-lived. Only about, what, 14, 16 months ponies delivered the mail. But the idea was very interesting, that you could send someone something written and they could have it in you know a week or two or even a few days, depending on your route. So there was an immediacy there that we didn't have before. And it was because, again, of the horses that you could take care of and tend to and make right and enjoy. And even before horses, we had uh, smoke signals from Indians, which were rudimentary, but they did communicate ideas. They sent messages. They were mimetic. They were an original human meme, where if you understood what was being said in smoke, then you knew what was going on in your area. And information, even 150 years ago, was very valuable. The telegram brought us closer together, almost instantaneous communication, Morse code, wires. You can see we're moving from the animal hoof up in the sky on a telephone pole to a wire. And what many young people don't know or even have a memory of is the life of a pager. Now, this is probably 20 years ago. You had a hard-line phone, right, where you pick up, call somebody. But if you were out in the world and you weren't really near a, a, a hard-line phone, you had no way to communicate. People didn't really know where you were until the rise of the pager, where you could send a text message wirelessly to somebody else. And you could use your phone to page someone. Doctors, business people... They started the wave with the pager because they were the only ones who could afford the technology. And that is really an interesting missing link that goes from the hardline uh, telephone to the cellular phone is the pager in the middle was the thing that kind of helped people get over that bump of not picking up a phone to call somebody, that you could get information pushed to you, someone could contact you without you having to do anything about it. And the great thing about having a pager is you could have information and you could either act on it or not. Today, somebody sends you an iMessage, they can see if you've read it or not, and they can get very angry with you if you don't instantly reply. A pager was that bridge between instantaneousness and response. So our infrastructure has changed from hoof, as I said, to the sky. And in that transition, we are seeing the loss of human interaction. We are no longer hands-on. We are now BCC'd and CC'd. We are now virtual. The heart, the wonder has been taken out of communication. Which takes us to our third point. Social living. The family unit, the traveled out west together, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, kids, dogs, has been not only deconstructed, today it's been destroyed. Now, the millennials living at home who won't leave, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where grandma and grandpa would come and live, and you'd all live in this large, extended family where people took care of each other. Sure, there are individual examples of that still surviving today, but generally speaking, people want to be alone. They want to be separated. 
They want to go their own way. They don't want to be bothered with people and things that don't interest them. And the most interesting thing about that is in the Old West, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, in America, especially in the Midwest, not the big cities, if you went to visit somebody, you didn't ring their front bell. You didn't go up the porch. You went around back. You went in the kitchen door. You didn't knock. And you didn't have to worry about knocking because there were, the door was open. And it was unlocked. And that's where you met and you socialized. In the kitchen. Not the parlor. Not the bar. When someone came to visit, they came in your back kitchen door. You sat down. You had a conversation. And it was quite lovely. And we've lost that kitchen door value that is so important on a personal level of connecting with another person. Now we live in houses that are big and grand and really too big. We have divided ourselves into apartments, tiny boxes. Some of us have tried to reconnect with the past by getting RVs and thinking like the Conestoga mindset that I'm going to travel the country and meet with people. But so many of these RVs are, you know, $500,000, $3 million, and there's no experience or reconnecting with the land. All you're doing is driving around a giant penthouse, and you're isolated, and people have to ring your doorbell to get in, and you might pretend to have a barbecue that makes you social, but at night you go in and you lock everything down and you sleep in your tin box. And religion, which used to bind many of us, is now merely convenient. We do it as we please. It's a buffet. I'll believe this, but not that. I'll do this, but here, but not over there. And that is uh, concerning from a social point of view because religion helps give people context. It can give people a reason to believe in living. And when that is taken away from someone, either through the progress of time and society or by mandate of law or just by disinterest in the family unit, people can become wounded. And religion isn't just always about morality or about faith. And there are atheistic people that I know who are very strong supporters of religion. And it's usually those bystanders who don't have a dog in the fight who are most tolerant of religious freedom of expression. So, we now live in this modern, compressed life. We have moved west, and once you move west and everybody takes up the land, then you start building skyscrapers because you go up when you went out of room going from right to left. So you go up, you're compressed, you're isolated, you're alone. DNA testing becomes the norm. Playing around with gene, gene manipulation is the norm. And we have to be wary when we humans tempt to play the role of the gods. Because the gods will, by choice and want, punish us. They will wipe us out because they know more than we do and they know where we've been and they know where we're going. Predestiny, prescience, whatever you want to call it. The push for knowledge, the push for science is very important to understand and to better our lives. But when we go too far too fast before people are ready for these changes, a deconstruction of human composure is the end result. So, where do we go? Into the future. We risk becoming invaluable to no one. If we simply live a life alone, compressed in our own tiny apartment, with no one to care for us or to care about us, unless, of course, we pay them, or if there's something transactional in it for them, we are at risk. Today, the penny is replaced by the Bitcoin. The handshake is now the selfie. The joy of living has been replaced by the requirement to live online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 
every day for the rest of your life. So we have lost the self in the misjudgment of what we had always hoped society would become. Do we really believe the end of us would be completely separated from each other? Yes, we divide and conquer, we don't like people, we try to get away from them, but when we are as divided as we are as a world, as grains of sand blowing in the wind, the center of us cannot and shall not hold because we are too easily wiped away. We are forgotten. In this globalization economy, the individual is cast away. And that is a danger we cannot abide. Thank you. Be a human meme.